Great. Um, it's so nice to see everyone. Warm well, welcome to um, you all. Um, it's really nice to see some familiar faces and names. Um, we really encourage you um, to put your videos on if you haven't already. Um, so um, please do try. Um, today we will be covering um, the topic of AI and your job search um, and also harnessing its capabilities um, to help you remain competitive in today's job market. Um, obviously, it's a huge huge and developing topic. Um, so we'll be touching on as much um, as we possibly can in the time that we have this morning. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Athesic. I am Work Avenue's Employment Pathways Coordinator. Um, I ultimately manage the jobs board. I speak to employers um, regularly. Um, and if you do actively engage with us, you'll know that I'm very much um, part of your application process, help you with your CV development cover letter alongside um, and the employment advisors and that brings me to and um, we are also joined by Richard Linden one of our fantastic employment advisors uh, let him introduce himself yeah so uh thanks Melissa hi everyone uh, my name is Richard Linden um I'm uh, an employment advisor at Work Avenue uh good to see uh quite quite a lot of familiar faces and and some new people which is great um, so just very quick intro on me. Um, I uh, work in the employment team. I help clients with finding work, with uh, choosing careers. I get involved in uh, obviously the workshops and the events that we run in the employment team. And I'll be co-hosting with uh, Melissa today on this webinar. So nice to, uh, good to see you all. Back to you, Melissa. Great, thank you. Um, so just um, a very brief um introduction um, to all our newcomers um, about Work Avenue. Um, ultimately, our mission is to help people uh, like yourselves to earn a living. Um, we offer many, many services, including employment and business services and beyond. Um, including our wage um, program, which offers training courses. And as of this year, we have helped over 2000 people with their job search and um, still counting. Today, um, we will be covering quite a bit of um, subjects. Um, part one, we will be covering the impact of AI technology on the job market and what this means for your job search. Part two, how to harness the power of AI for your job search so that you can remain competitive. And then part three, it's really um, everything else beyond AI that you should be aware of. And we'll then open the floor to all your questions. And um, so please do try save them for the end and make notes as you go along or pop them in the um, message, messenger box because um, we'll love to obviously answer as many questions as we can in the time that we have. Um, also, just so you're aware, we have created a very comprehensive guide for you guys, um, uh, which we will we'll be sending out to you after the webinar today, along with the slides, and uh, you'll also be given access to this recording um, after today. Um, so don't worry about it screenshotting or taking like thorough notes because you will um, be given access to it all. Um, so before we begin, um, we'd really uh, love to know um, if you have used AI in your job search, um, whether extensively or not at all. Um, you should have um, an interactive poll just pop up on your screen now. Um, it'll be great to know um, if you have, if you haven't. Um, there really is no right or wrong answer. Um, that's why we are doing our um, webinar today, ultimately to make AI as accessible as possible. Um, it suits every skill level. Um, so don't worry if you um, feel like maybe you have no idea what AI is, or if you do, then that's great. Um, but that's what we're here for. Um, I think we have all the answers. So that's brilliant. I'm going to end that and we can have a look at that later. So let's begin. The impact of AI technology on the jobs market. AI has been such an buzzword for a long time now, and it's rapidly transforming the jobs market. And ultimately, as job seekers, um, you need to be aware of its impact. AI um, technology like ChatGPT is incredibly crucial um, strategy for your job uh, for you as job seekers to stand out and succeed in your job search. Um, you really need to be speaking the language used in recruitment. Um, employers have been leveraging these technologies for quite a while now, um, and it's just getting um, bigger and better as AI technology kind of advances as we go along. Um, so 
AI kind of like ATS, which um, stands for Applicant Tracking Systems. Um, recruiters use this, employees use this to help uh, filter, rank and manage your job applications. Um, so that means um, they can filter your CV based on keywords and criteria relevant to their job description. So this is before even like a human uh, recruiter even gets involved in the process. Um, so AI can for sure help you um, optimize your um applications to employers and um, it's really important that you guys know that that's the kind of technology that's out there um, and also by just using this technology um, it's going to even out the playing field and uh, help you stand out as a candidate. Some really interesting stats for you that we've um, uncovered and um, which kind of gives you an idea of the magnitude of um, AI in today's kind of world. Um, by 2024, it's predicted that the global AI market will grow to over half a trillion US dollars and worth more than $1.5 trillion by 2030. So you can only imagine the possibilities um, in the coming years. Um, nowadays, 77% of businesses are using or exploring AI. Um, and as of last year, large companies are twice as likely to use AI than small companies. Um, but that percentage is actually slowly increasing um, as AI is becoming quite a standard thing um, practice within the workplace. 83% um, of UK workers say AI and automation will enable more impactful work. Um, this means that not only will AI be helpful for your job search, but please go when you will get um, your new positions. Um, it will um, be future proofing and help you um, with your future career. Um, Britain has twice the number of AI based companies than any European nation which I thought was incredibly interesting. And finally, according to PwC, AI and related technologies are expected to generate nearly as many jobs as they displace in the UK within the next two decades. An estimated 7.2 million fresh roles could emerge. Um, so how can AI assist you with your job search? Um, AI can help with a lot of things um, from document creation. Um, what I mean by that is it can create your CV for you. It can write your cover letter for you. It can write applications um, and also improve them. It can help with your interview preparation. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal what it can do. It can stimulate virtual interviews, generate responses to common interview questions, and also kind of act like a job coach um, where they can provide feedback on your responses. Um, it can also help with your general job search. Um, so you can it can help you find opportunities based on your parameters um, and skill set and prompts, which we will um, definitely be going through um, in a little bit. And of course, continuous learning, um, which is very important in this new AI market, um, where it can assist um, you in learning new skills or improving existing ones. And um, it's just very important to stay up to date um, with today's trends. Um, so we've compiled a comprehensive list <laughs> of all the um, AI that's beneficial to you as a job seeker. It's 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 a lot, <laughs> um, but we do have it in our guide for you, um, which you can then go and do your own research and um, do a bit of dabbling and see what you're comfortable with, what you can use. And um, obviously, we are here to help you um, do that. Um, after this, you can make an appointment with an employment advisor. Um, but the AI that we found that's beneficial to you um, includes, you know, job search and application. Um, LinkedIn actually is its own AI. So LinkedIn is such a huge um um, important factor in your job search, interview preparation and performance, resume and content generation, and so much more. Um, so there's a lot of AI technologies that are available to you um, right now. Um, Melissa, course, um, just, just yeah. before you carry on, um, a couple of uh, questions have come up in the chat. No, of um, course. People have asked, what does AI mean? Uh, someone's answered, we know it means artificial intelligence, but... Yes. Could you could you explain? I mean, do you know? Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> so AI, yes, it does stand for artificial intelligence. The artificial artificial intelligence ultimately is taught. Um, we'll have the developers, the back end, um, very cool um, guys who come in and develop these technologies. They 
um, pass through in the basic sense, like very complex code um, and um, teaching very complex algorithms. Um, so basically you learn about everything in the world. So um, let's say for ChatGPT, um, it's been um, fed lots of information about the world um, up until, up until I, I believe September 21. Right, um, yeah. So um, it's really just fed so much information um, and that's what AI um, is. It's, it's, just um, artificial intelligence. So it's not born with this information. Um, it's been given this information. And that's why it's continually developing and um, expanding. And um, yeah, I hope that answers your question. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Um, so back to ethical considerations, just with every um, technologies, you've got to be aware and um, there's a need for transparency because um, how do we ensure that AI algorithms are fair and unbiased? How do we protect your privacy and data security? You know, AI answers shouldn't be biased at all. They should they shouldn't discriminate. It should adhere to privacy and data protection. It should be safe and secure. You know, <laughs> we're talking about automated vehicles. 100% they need to be um, safe and secure. Um, bottom line is um, AI should be regularly monitored to ensure that it's always ethical and fair. Um, and now we're even seeing that some um, companies are putting policies in place where you're not even allowed to use AI in the workplace. Um, so um, just something to think about when you are when you are using AI. Um, upskilling and reskilling is a great um, topic and is essential for job seekers in the current market to develop and upskill to remain competitive, um, especially with the reliance on technology. Um, being digitally literate um, is essential. Um, of course, I will... Um, briefly explain to you our wage program where we have some fantastic training courses um, in marketing um, in zero if you're wanting to upskill in bookkeeping um, different training courses are going to help you move forward and just um, continue to remain competitive um, you can also go into Udemy, Coursera um, even YouTube if you type in what is AI or how can I use AI um, that's a great step in the right direction um, of course not only your digital skills are important um, your soft skills are equally as important so um, your emotional intelligence something that AI just doesn't have um, remember um, your other non-technical skills like critical thinking problem solving and um, lots more that AI just can't harness, um, at least for now. Um, so I'm going to, um, now that we know what uh, AI technologies are available and what they are, I'm gonna pass on to Richard, who's actually gonna teach you how to use those AI technologies. I thought it'd be a really useful tool, um, a really useful useful segment of this webinar to for, for me to explain to you um, how to use AI when when searching for works. I, I imagine that the, the majority of you are looking for work um, and would, would benefit from using it. So I'm gonna talk you through. And the main tool, um, in fact, if I'm being honest, the only tool I've used is ChatGPT. So that's the one we're gonna focus on today. Um, would anyone like to have a guess as to what the GPT stands for in chat GPT? Feel free to unmute yourself, shout it out if you want to. <clears throat> anyone? Okay, no worries. Um, the GPT stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. Okay, so it's quite a complicated term. I'm not gonna pretend I know how ChatGPT works, um, but over the last, you know, four, three or four months, I've I've very much learned how to use it. But I'm not going to pretend I know how it works. Um, but when it says pre-trained, um, basically, as I think Melissa mentioned earlier, all of its information only goes up to September 2021. So it's been pre-trained in billions. Of, um, of of parts of information that it collates all together since September 2021. So that's what it means by pre-trained. The programmers have um, fed it and it's learned from billions of pieces of information. And that's how it arrives at its answers. So to explain really, really simply, you can ask 
chat gpt for those of you that haven't used it before you can ask chat gpt a question okay and it will give you an answer um and um you know i i, I used it a couple of times i thought it was quite good and then i realized how good it was for um, help with my job. So obviously in my role as an employment advisor, I help people with their CV, with their cover letter, with their applications, with their personal state, their supporting statements. I help people with interviews. And ChatGP has, has massively helped me to help my clients in all these areas. So I'm going to um, explain to you a bit about that um, and how to use it. Um, just... As a caveat, just to make you all aware, um, we're we're many years away from the finished article. OK, so even though ChatGP can write a CV in 10 seconds for you when you fed it the information, I'll explain to you how it works soon. It, it still hasn't got, as Melissa alluded to earlier, it hasn't got your personality it doesn't have the nuances of exactly what message you want to get across. So you can only really use it as a guide. OK, you can't just copy and paste what chat GPT produces for a cover letter or for a CV or supporting statement, etc., or your LinkedIn profile. You can't just copy and paste it into the job application. Um, and the main reason for that is employers will know it's not you. ChatGP has got a certain style of writing. Um, apart from anything else, it's an American program. So um, it's written in, you know, the text, the spelling, the grammar is American, um, which, which will obviously be noticed. You know, um, work, Americans use a lot of Zs. So, you know, organizing um, and things like that. So you, you can't just copy and paste it, but you can, it, very importantly, you can use the information that comes out of it in a big way, it, you know, in, in your applications. You just need to tweak it and change it and, and apply the personal touch to it. Um, so it's very, very good, but just to be used as a guide. Okay, in order to set up ChatGPT, it's very much like anything, any account that you set up online. And I'm sure you've all, as we all have, set up, you know, hundreds of these accounts online, di different software, different web and uh, different uh, websites and stuff like that. So it's just very much the same. In fact, the only information I think it asks for uh, is your first name, your surname, your email address and your phone number. The reason it asks for your phone number is because it, I think it has to verify you as a person, verify your, um, and, and they do that through using your phone number. Um, there's two there's two um, types of ChatGPT accounts you can have. You can have the free version and you can have what's called. So the free version is called beta and the plus is called uh, and the paid version is called plus. I think it costs about twenty dollars a month. Um, you don't really need it, it. My message here really is you don't really need the paid version. Um, I've been using it for three or four months to help people look for work. And I've never really felt that I was lacking in any of the answers that I was given. However, I do have a friend that's got the paid version. And so he tells me it, they provide by, by having the paid version, you get more detailed, um, descriptive answers. Um, apparently, it's got access to one trillion parameters instead of billions and billions. Um, so yes, it's, it's a slightly more detailed, uh, complex program that will give you slightly more detailed, complex answers. Um, however, I don't think you necessarily need it. There are various other benefits of, of having the plus account. Um, can everyone just make sure they're muted? Thank you. Um, Richard, I will just add one thing just based sure. on a comment that I've just seen in the message. Um, chat, uh, GPT, um, for the paid version is actually a newer update so the information that it's giving you is updated as of um recently actually of this year 2023 uh gpt 3.5 is still as of september um 21, 21 um, yeah. but it still gives you sufficient and complex um information because it has been given that um so just so that you guys are aware yeah um so if for example we'll come on to the thanks for that melissa uh, but if for example um you know, you were looking for information on a company that was created in 2022, 
ChatGP will will have not heard of the the free version will have not heard of that example of, of that company because it it wasn't privy to that information. Um, but yeah, as I'm as I was saying, long and short of it is you don't really need to have the paid version. Um, okay, so um, I just mentioned a little bit about prompting. So prompting is the word that ChatGPT uses for what you write in the box that you ask a question. So essentially it's the command you give to chat GPT. It's the, the questioning you use that they just use the word prompt. It's quite, um, it's quite a popular uh, software engineering uh, t terminology, computer programming terminology. Um, the prompting takes some getting used to, um, you know, you, you, you'll find once you've used it, um, actually, I remember from uh, Melissa's uh, right at the beginning, 15 out of 23 of you chose the bottom two options so that you either don't really know much about it or you've never used it before. So when you start using it, you'll realise that um, it's actually quite self-explanatory. Um, you'll get used to it. And it's basically just a, a, a way of asking the bots questions, essentially. Um, so that's that's essentially what prompting is, what question to ask. Um, to give you an example, OK, um, let's say let, let's say you were you just had an interview. OK, and you wanted to write the employer an email to thank them. OK, you could write you could ask ChatGPT to write that email for you, which, of course, you'll then adapt slightly at the end. So. Um, you know, M M Melissa's quite nicely laid out. So firstly, you can have an objective. So your objective is, I would like to write to an employer. Um, you know, the outcome is I want to write a really nice email to thank them for, for hosting me, have, giving me an interview today. Um, you can provide relevant context to Jack chat GPT. So you can tell them the name of the company, what the, the job was that you interviewed for, um, you know, any other context or any other background information, like, for example, um, if you noticed they had a really impressive building and you wanted to tell the employer, I loved your offices, you could include that in. So you write all of your um, description into the prompt, your prompt into the chat GPT field. OK. And then you and then you press enter and it will it will give you an email. So that's that's just a quick example for you for how it works. Um, I will question... just add, Richard, sorry, um, that prompt skills are really important to develop, um, but not only for ChatGPT. This this skill can be used across um, most AI technologies, um, which um, you can refer back to the list that we're going to give you. Um, but this prompting um, skill is very important when using AI in yeah. general, not just ChatGPT. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, okay, so um, one more thing to mention: we are we are going to actually look at how you prompt, and and uh, we've created. I say we, Melissa's created um, a video, like a demonstration for using ChatGPT to show you how to use it. So we're going to look at that shortly. But just before we do that, one additional thing that you can do is you can give ChatGPT, uh, even before you start using it, you can give it some instructions, okay? So some information, some added info, insight into you. Um, so things like, you know, you could tell ChatGPT in the custom instructions that you're looking for work. Um, you can maybe say what type of work you're looking for. Um, you, could, you could tell them a little bit about yourself, um, you know, maybe where you're based, where you live, or, um, you know, what sort of person you are, um, you, you can feed it information so it learns about you. So whenever it provides an answer, it's bearing these things in mind. It's a very, very clever piece of kit. It, you can feed it these background instructions so that it knows these things about you. You can also tell it, tell the, the computer how um, how you want it to respond to you. So um, you, you could you could ask you could ask ChatGP to respond formally. You could ask it to refer to you as, you know, your first name. Um, you know, how would you like to be addressed? You you can 
you know, you could you, you could do so much with it. Um, but this is what the custom instructions are, just to give you a, an idea of just just to give ChatGPT an idea about anything uh, you want to before you start. Um, just so you know, let's say, for example, you, you ask ChatGPT just to give you short responses. If you at any point change your mind, when you type into the pro when you type the prompt in, you can just say, could I have a long response for this one? Or can I have a response of over 500 words or no more than a thousand words? And it, it it's really amazing. It creates the response for what you've asked. Um, so, so the custom instructions aren't set in stone. You can adapt them as you go along. Uh, okay, so we're gonna use an example. OK, and the example we're going to we're just going to imagine that you're applying for this job. So think think of um, th put yourself in a situation. You've got a job description. OK, so in this case, we're using the example of um, an office administrator working for a company called Fusion Consulting. Here's the job description. Very, very sort of, um, you know, uh, obvious responsibilities for an administrator. Uh, booking appointments, meeting and greeting clients, diary management, etc. We just chose a fairly straightforward job that, that most people can understand. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can create a CV and cover letter for this job. Let's imagine you're applying for this job. So we've got um, a demo video. So I'm just going to play this video. Um, yeah. OK, so th this is what the um, opening screen of chat, PT, chat, chat GPT is like. And this is the field that you type in the prompts into. And you can see there we've typed in a, a prompt. I'm not going to read the whole thing out, but please, can you create a CV for an administrator with three years experience, et cetera, et cetera. So we fed the computer the information in order for them to create a CV. So that's the first step that we've done. Um, and this is how ChatGP answers it within 10 seconds, depending on how quickly your computer is running. It will just spew out a CV based on what you've asked. And, and the jobs and the education that you put in. Now. Um, you the last thing that ChatGPT said after the CV was produced was remember to tailor your CV to each application. So that's what we're doing now. Um, you can see now that we're entering into ChatGPT the job advert that we looked at, at the, on the last slide. So that it's aware of the job that is being applied for. OK, and then we're asking ChatGPT to tailor the CV according to the job description that we're the job that we're applying for i have to say it's um such a shame that the free version you aren't actually able to attach documents um in the plus version you are actually able to um attach multiple documents and um, so obviously that's a plus um but for the free version it's very very simple you just copy and paste the entire document and it will still do a brilliant job in reading it for you yeah. Save yourselves $20 a month and just copy and paste. Yeah. I don't think I'd be paying $20 just to, so I don't have to copy and paste. Anyway. <laughs> right. So, um, and there we go. So it's it's read the job description and it's tailored the CV accordingly. Really, really clever. I'll just let that play out so you can see that. This is obviously something we pre-recorded. We're not doing this live now. OK, and then the final step here is um, we've just given it a few additional commands to tailor the CV one final time. So things like, you know, my name is and then Melissa's put her name. Um, you know, don't mention the company's name in the profile because you wouldn't normally mention the company's name in the profile of a CV. You'd save that for the cover letter. So just a few additional features. And that and that's kind of like, you know, the finished article, so to speak. 
Now, I want to point out to you that you can you can copy and paste this now into a Word document, okay? And then you've got your CV. But what you might prefer to do is to have your own CV template and either transfer over or copy and paste over the various elements of the CV into the new template. Because whilst this is great and everything, it's not a particularly, it's not the, the most up-to-date contemporary and elegant template. Whilst the content is bang on, the content is brilliant, you might want to just copy and paste it into your own template. And of course, at Work Avenue, we can help you. We've got a hundred templates we can share with you. Um, so obviously just feel free to ask if you need to do that. Um, the, these are the prompts that we used. Um, again, we'll be sending these slides out. Okay, so the first prompt was, please, could you create a CV? The second one was, now can you align it to the job description? And the third one was just some 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 updates to that. Um, the same can be done of a cover letter. So I'll just play this video. So you've got your CV. You now want a cover letter for this job, um, administrator at Fusion. Um, so here, here are the prompts for the cover letter. So the cover letter comes out. Um, we noticed, or Melissa noticed, but I, I've also noticed that they're quite long. The The standard chat GPT cover letter is quite long. So actually, um, the next prompt you'll see is, can you please fit it to one page? So chat GPT cleverly reduces it in, in such a way that it, it, it still tries to have the important information. It just makes it more concise and produces a one page document. Um, however, you know, um, Melissa also asked it to, um, to, to use bullet points because actually we find for cover letters, whilst there's no right or wrong way to do a cover letter, it's quite nice to have bullet points as to what your, um, how you match the job that you're applying for. So it's now adapted it so that it's got bullet points in there. Um, and again, I think the final prompt um, is is just just to make it slightly more, um, you know, specific to the role. Um, I'll show you on the next slide exactly what the prompts are, but it, it's just tweaking it and tweaking it until you're happy with it. But even once you've tweaked it and you're happy with it, you'll still need to adapt it because it's still going to have the American spelling and grammar it's still not going to be quite in your own personal, it's not going to quite have your personal touch. So you can tweak it and tweak it and tweak it, but ultimately at the end of the day, you still have to adapt it for you. Okay. Um, here are some of the, here are the prompts that we use, but as I said, we'll be sending these out. So I'm not going to focus too long on these. You can look at these when we've sent it out. Okay, so moving on. Um, so that was the the CV and the cover letter. Um, I've also noticed in the time that I've been using that ChatGPT is really good for um, for helping you to prepare for an interview. OK, um, I did a really clever thing the other day that Melissa told me about. Um, I, I was preparing for I was helping one of my clients prepare for an interview and I showed them on ChatGPT that you can ask ChatGPT in the prompt. You can say. Um, you know, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I think it was um, I'm applying for a job as a marketing executive. I've got an interview coming up with company X. Can't remember the name. Um, can you please provide a mock interview um, by asking one question at a time and waiting for my answer? So I did it with the client. I, I, I We worked on the answers as we went along. Link, um, Chat GPT really cleverly asked the question stopped waiting for the answer and then asked another question and went through the whole interview like that um you could also you know if you want to you can just ask chat gpt to provide a whole mock interview for you so um all the questions that you'd like to practice ahead of an interview that you've got coming up you can ask chat gpt to um 
provide you lots of information on the company. So let's say you've got an interview coming up for an administrator role um, at company Y. You can say to ChatGPT, I've got an interview coming up for an administrator at, Chat, uh, uh, at uh, company Y. Can you please tell me about company Y in as much detail as possible, um, outlining, outlining the different departments of the organization? And can you please explain to me how the back office department works within this company? Okay. Um, so it's really, really useful for, in so many ways when you're preparing for an interview. Um, the only thing you might struggle with is, like I said, if it's a if it's a new company or if the company's gone through lots of changes since September 2021, when the free ChatGPT um, program runs till, then obviously you're going to have some problems because it won't know anything about the new company or the structural updates. But of course, in that situation, you can just look online. You can look on the company's website. But yeah, so it's really, really useful for preparing for interviews. And actually, um, as Melissa said, the guide that we've got, we've got loads of examples of, of ways in which you can prepare. So prompts that you can ask. We've got lots of examples on that guide that, we've, that we're going to send out to everyone. So hopefully that will be useful. Um, um, there are, of course, I know I've talked only about chat GPT, but there's actually unbelievably, I mean, this is just three examples. There's loads, there's loads of examples of uh, AI websites, AI software that can help you prepare for an interviews. I think the best one I saw, but I have to be really honest with you and say, I haven't used it, but just from the description, it looks amazing. Uh, interviewing.io, um, Apparently, they've got a whole load of people across the world that have agreed to do virtual mock interviews. And I don't know if you know anything more about this, Melissa, but you, you can actually schedule, sometimes with very little notice, a virtual mock interview with someone in Canada or Scotland or wherever um, for the area that's an expert in, in the area that you're interviewing for. Um, the, the, the AI bot sends the person a message, ask them if they're available, or checks their calendar or whatever. Um, and so so an amazing tool to get a virtual mock interview before your interview, sometimes with very little notice. Um, so there's a whole load of this out there. Um, I don't know if you know anything more about that, Melissa, but um, you can do the research and, and you can really get some amazing tools, uh, some, some stuff there to help you. Um, so that's basically it on, on this segment of the webinar. Um, the main thing to, to remind you of is it's just a, if you haven't used it before, I know it can be a little bit daunting or it might be a bit scary to use ChatGPT if you've never used it before. Um, but it really is great. And if you just practice with it, you've got unlimited prompts. There's no limit. So if you keep trying it out, keep practicing it. Um, you can actually go back on. So let's say you write a prompt and you didn't like the answer or you didn't quite write the prompt correctly. You can go and edit your original prompt. OK, so just just play with it. Have a go at it. Use it. You know, try and create a CV, um, try and create a cover letter, an application. You know, give it a go and let us know how you get on. And if you do obviously need additional support with it, then then please let us know, you know, book an appointment. And we'd be really happy to talk you through it and, and help you out with it. Um, the last thing I wanted to comment on was LinkedIn. Link, LinkedIn has made massive ground with AI. Um, one thing that you can do with LinkedIn, actually, is um, it, it can help you create your headline, your profile, your about section, your uh, description. It, it can actually help you create that. So in a similar way to ChatGPT, so you can either use LinkedIn or you can use ChatGPT, but LinkedIn has, has almost got its own AI bot that helps you with these things. It's also got some really cool stuff. Um, you know, if a, if a recruiter or a person messages you, uses the email to message you, um, I'm not sure if you have to be premium for this, but it's got an AI bot to help you respond. So it can help you respond to the message that you've been sent. It's really, really clever. Uh, it's got loads and loads of capabilities, so it's really worth checking it out. Um, and and actually, 
I run a, um, a LinkedIn for Employment workshop uh, every, I think it's every four to six weeks. Um, and I'm, I'm actually going to add a couple of slides since I've started using and perfecting ChatGPT um, and using AI with LinkedIn. So I'm going to add a few slides. So feel free to book yourself on the next workshop, on the next LinkedIn for Employment workshop. And we'll actually talk a little bit about, um, you know, a couple of the slides that we that we talk about will be on AI. So uh, do do obviously book yourself on that um, workshop as well. So I am going to be speaking now about beyond AI. Um, what do I mean by beyond AI? Let, AI is not human. Um, and I want to just talk to you about the uniquely human um, things that AI just uh, can't replace um, yet uh, in your job search. Um, so I will begin with um, just market intelligence, research, local knowledge. Um, you know, AI it may seem very complex um, in what it knows, um, but it's constantly learning, it's constantly developing. Um, and um, you will, as job seekers, just need to remain informed um, about your industries um, and the general job market. Um, so um, keep at it, you know, read um, articles online, um, do a bit of research, because um, AI um, can certainly aid in that, um, but it can't replace that entirely. Um, Networking, report building, genuine human connections. Nothing can replace building human relationships, genuine connections, fostering them. Um, while AI can help you prepare, um, it really just can't replace that in authentic engagement. You know, your confidence, your body language, perception, um, your unique personalities and traits that will appear ultimately resonate with employers. So AI can't do this. Um, so um, if you do get to the point where you are interviewing, um, come and um, speak to us, uh, book in a uh, mock interview with us, um, and we can definitely help you with that, um, you know, to help elevate your presence and because AI just can't do this. Um, it's important um, to personalize your applications. Um, it requires a deeper understanding of yourself and just self-awareness that AI just doesn't have. Um, it's the same thing with negotiation you know AI doesn't know your worth and the culture of the workplace that you're looking to um, work um, so ultimately that emotional intelligence um, AI lacks this um, I say that maybe quite possibly emotions are binary so it may eventually learn um, who knows and um, this is why I personally say please and thank you to my <laughs> chat GPT uh, robot um, but, you know, your intuition just can't be replaced. We're really, we are humans first. Um, you know, there is a misconception that job hunting should be done um, behind doors and you really don't need to be alone. AI will, of course, help you um, not feel alone in this process, um, which is the whole point of this workshop. Um, but you should never be alone in your job search. Um, and that's why we're here at Work Avenue um, are here to help navigate um, your job search, your career change, um, whatever you're here um, that you need help with. That's what we're here for. Um, and you'll see um, all our um, work at, um, employment advisors just dotted around on this chat as well. Um, so we're all here to help you. Um, so as we look to the future, it's clear that AI will, of course, continue to play a significant role in the job market. Um, new jobs will emerge that will require skills in the area, such as like data analysis, machine learning, robotics, and so on and so forth. You know, the, the opportunities um, are endless and also so are the possibilities. We really don't know what's going to happen next year, never mind in 10 years' time. Um, we've we've noticed a few trends though that have emerged with employers um, that I think you guys should be um, aware of as job seekers. Um, so obviously, um, as I said earlier, companies are investing in AI to drive decision making, optimize processes within the workplace um, so that they can gain a competitive edge. So not only you as um, jobs searchers um, should um, have this competitive edge where you are understanding AI and the possibilities of AI, um, but um, that you will eventually um, be potentially using them in your jobs. So it's future proofing, it's, it's making sure that you can 
be aware of that technology. Um, employers are also placing a greater emphasis on face-to-face -face interviews and other screening methods such as assessments. Why? Because if every single person, every single one of you in this um, webinar today are creating five-star applications, you know, with ChatGPT, with the help of our advisors, um, employers are going to struggle. They're going to think, wow, everyone's amazing. So they're going to really work a lot harder to try and find um, the right candidate for their vacancy. Um, so you will start to notice that there will be more bottlenecks um, to go through. Um, but obviously, this will vary depending on you know the size of the company. If it's a bigger company, this is more likely um, to happen. If it's a smaller company, maybe less so um, at this point. Um, and of course, an increased um, emphasis on reference checks just um, to further... Um, um, emphasize um, what I've just said. Um, ultimately, to embrace this AI technology, um, you will be able to leverage it um, and gain a competitive edge in your industry. Um, so obviously we've given you so much information today um, and it's really important to know about AI and um, what it can do for you, um, for your job search and beyond. Um, but we really want you to take action, you know, research um, and use AI tools like ChatGBT. Really don't be afraid of it. Um, you can't go wrong with it. Um, if you do go wrong with it, you know, if you have a typo here and there or you don't know how to um, copy and paste, you know, it's a real um easy software to use, um, ChatGPT, um, but there are others um, that you can start using, playing around with it and get comfortable with it um, because they really will help you um, with your job search. Um, LinkedIn is an amazing AI tool. Um, you know, use ChatGPT um, or other kind of like copywriting AIs um, to optimize your profile. Richard will help you out with that in his LinkedIn um, workshop. Um, definitely join us for that. Um, something that I will stress, you know, don't be a bluff master, okay? AI just can't, although AI can make your CV and it can make um, a covering letter for you, just remember that it's not human, you're human. It's gonna, um, you need to take it and develop it and create a more human side to your applications, which is ultimately what employers are going to look for um, to stand out of the crowd. Um, of course, don't forget the covering letters. They're as important as your CV. Um, learn about our services. Um, we have a lot of um, services that are available to you as job seekers. So really, you know, join us on all our other webinars. Um, take a look at wage training courses. Um, they're brilliant um, for this continuous learning, um, which you should um, look to um, embrace, especially in this new kind of world that we're seeing. Um, really, I want to just conclude and say that the key to approaching AI um, is not seeing it as a threat. Really try and embrace it, get comfortable with it, work with it, um, and it will really help you and um, definitely make a meaningful impact on your job search. Um, but remember, we are humans first, so um, we are obviously here to help you um, move forward. Um, so um, just before we open the floor to our q and I just wanted to let you know that we have a fantastic um, new um, event coming up for our um, Work Avenue AI Task Force, um, especially if AI has peaked, um, if this webinar has peaked your um, interest in AI, or if you want to further kind of get some more information about it, um, it will be running on October the 18th um, at 7pm um, at our offices. Um, the evening will include a panel of speakers, including AI, tech, digital marketing experts, um, and then it will be an open floor for you guys to ask anything AI related. Um, this is totally privileged information because it's not even on our website yet, um, so definitely um, not one to be missed, and you'll be able to sign up for this event um, at the end of the week, so definitely um, keep an eye out on our events page because it's going to spearhead the community's response to AI, um, and it's also um, the very first of its kind within the community. So. Um, let's open the floor up to some questions.